Hello, my name is Sunita Kadian. Welcome to this video on IELTS reading test tips. So in the IELTS exam, your listening, reading and writing tests are taken together. Soon after the listening test, which is for 30 minutes, your reading test starts. The reading test lasts for 60 minutes. Now, before we understand some tips about the reading test, we should also know whether it is the same for the academic and the general training students. So is it the same for the academic and the general training students? No, it is not the same because the text that you get to read based on which the questions are to be answered, that text is different for both the academic and the general training students. So what do you get in the IELTS general training reading test? So there are three sections in all. In section one, you get two or three or several shorter texts, which are based on daily life. So they can be as simple as the notices that you read when you go to a park. Now in section two, you get two texts and both of them are related to the workplace. So they can be about the policies in an organization or uh, the way you should apply somewhere or maybe the way one gets leave in an organization. So based on such things, the texts are given to you. In section three, there is one long discursive text. It's a longer one. This is the most difficult one uh, for the general training students. Uh, it can be taken from uh, a novel, from a magazine. So you should be in the habit of reading. Start reading the newspapers, novels. It'll be easier for you to attempt questions based on what you get in section three. Now, what do the IELTS academic students get? In the IELTS academic reading test, also you get three sections, but in each section, there's one long passage of around 900 words. And the text is taken from newspapers, books, journals, and magazines. So it is academic in nature. So obviously the vocabulary used in the academic reading text is also more difficult when it's compared to the IELTS reading test for the general training students. However, the skills that are tested in both are similar. So you are tested for paraphrasing. Do you have the paraphrasing skills? Are you able to paraphrase uh, the title, the subtitles, or the questions, the keywords in the questions? Because you do not get exactly the same words in the questions, the paraphrase is used. You should be able to understand a question and then look for its answer. You should be able to skim through the text. So when you get something to read, you do not move to the question straight away. The first step should be to skim the text. Now, when you skim it, how you skim it? Do you read everything for detail or you just go through it? So you go through the text, you skim it, you understand the layout of the passage of the text given to you what is given where you understand that and you do it fast so the skill of speed reading is needed because you get just one hour to read the text given to you in three sections and answer 40 questions based on the passages given to you and after reading the questions after paraphrasing the keywords in the questions understanding what is required if you have to answer that question, you should be able to scan the passage. So sometimes you have to scan only one or two paragraphs. Sometimes you have to scan the complete text to answer a particular question. So you should understand what these skills are, how they help you to uh, attempt your reading test questions better in the exam. So although the text in both the academic and the general training test is different, the type of questions that you get are similar. So you should understand 
what those different types of questions are. You should become familiar with the different types of questions. There are about 14 types of questions. Of course, all are not asked in the same exam, uh, maybe five to six, but you should know how to answer those questions. You should understand the strategy. So if you're familiar with the types of questions that you can get in your exam based on the text that you read, you'll be able to attempt the test faster. So what are those different types of questions that you can expect in your reading test? Let's understand those. So the different types of questions include such questions like matching headings questions. So you have to match the heading given to you with the paragraphs, with which paragraph, which heading can go. And true, false, not given questions. So based on the facts, it's all factual. Those facts are present or not present in the text given to you. So you have true, false, not given questions. Then yes, no, not given questions. So the author may have an opinion about something, may make a claim about something. So yes, no, and not given questions are all about the attitude of the author towards a particular subject. The opinion of the author for something and the claim made by the author. So you should pay extra attention to the adjectives, the describing words that the author uses when you have to answer this type of questions. Then you have the sentence completion questions. So you get sentences with one or two blanks and you're supposed to write the words that are missing over there. Now, when you get this kind of questions, sentence completion questions or notes, flowchart completion questions, you should be able to understand the complete sentence. And it should be, be grammatically correct when you uh, answer. And whichever words you write in the answer, are exactly the same as they are given in the text. So this is what you need to practice. Then the diagram labeling questions. A diagram may be given to you based on the text and you have to label that diagram. The multiple choice questions. So in the multiple choice questions, uh, you have the question stem, three options are given to you. And you should understand which of the the options given to you answers the question stem correctly. You get matching paragraph information questions. So there are different paragraphs, in the longer passages. You get some information about each. Now, what you have to understand is in such questions, matching headings, matching paragraph information questions, uh, if there are five paragraphs, you may get eight options. So you should be able to select out of those eight options. Three may be redundant. So you need practice for this kind of questions. Many students get confused in multiple choice questions, matching paragraph information questions or matching heading questions. Then the summary completion questions. So such questions can be based on the complete passage or maybe a part of the passage. And of course, the choosing the title question. So if your passage does not have a title, understand that yet what it is all about mm -hmm. and then accordingly uh, match the title the table completion questions short answer questions so maybe in one two or three words you may have to answer a question matching sentence ending questions so a sentence a paraphrase of the sentence is given to you you do not get exactly the same sentence you do not get it in exactly the same manner. It's paraphrased. And uh, suppose you get five questions where the first part of the sentence is given to you. For the second part, that is a sentence ending, you may have eight options given to you. So you'll have to select out of those and match. Now the list selection questions. So list is given to you and whatever information you get, you have to match that with the words given to you in the list and the categorization questions. So to which category, there may be A, B, C, D category, to which category, which one belongs. So this kind of questions require a lot of practice. You should understand the strategy. It's all about understanding the strategy, become familiar with that 
and then you will be able to do your reading test very well. Okay, so how are these questions assessed? How are you scored in the reading test? Now, each question carries one mark. There is no negative marking. Of course, if the spelling is wrong, the answer is wrong. You must attempt all questions. Do not leave any because there is no negative marking. And based on your correct answers, you get your score. So it may be band score five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it may be, it'll depend upon your score. Now here there is slight variation. It is different for the academic students and different for the general training students. So what is it? We should understand that. So let's understand how are these questions assessed or how is your score calculated? So how are you assessed? Based on your correct answers. Now it's different for the academic students. So the, in the academic, if you get 39 to 40 correct answers, you get a band score nine. Whereas in the general training test, you get a band score nine only if for all 40 answers are correct. You see this difference here in the academic, if 37 to 38 are correct, you can get a band score 8.5. Here for 39 correct answers, you get 8.5. Here for 35 to 36 correct, you can get a band score eight. And for general training for 37 to 38, correct answers, you get a band score eight. For 33 to 34, correct answers in academic, you get 7.5. And in the general training test, you get 7.5 if 36 are correct. If 34 to 35 are correct in general training, you get a band score seven. And you get a band score seven in the academic test if 30 to 32 are correct. So that means, if you are a general training student, you cannot afford to make more than six mistakes, five to six mistakes, because uh, uh, the band score that you require, most of the students require at least a band score seven in general training test. So you need to practice, understand the strategy so that you can get your desired band score. Always read the instructions carefully. So you get these instructions in your reading test. Answer in no more than one word, one word and a number, not more than two words, not more than three words. Understand the instructions carefully. Now you can answer the questions using all uppercase or lowercase, whatever it may be, be consistent with it. Do not mix up the two. But yes, if you are planning to use the lowercase, be careful wherever uh, the capital letter is needed. Otherwise, it'll be marked wrong. For instance, if somebody's name is Abraham and you start the name with small a, it'll be marked wrong. Uh, pay attention to spelling. Wrong spelling means wrong answer. For instance, separate. If instead of writing S-E-P-A-R-A-T-E, -E, you write S-E-P-E-R-A-T-E, -E -E, your answer will be considered wrong. So pay attention to spelling. Let's understand a few important tips that you should keep in mind while taking the IELTS reading test. Read the title or the heading carefully because the title of the passage tells you what that passage is about. So you'll have an idea about what you're going to read. Then skim through the passage fast. So your skill of skimming is needed over here. And of course, speed reading. Read through it fast, like skim through it fast, understand the layout of the text. And as you read it, underline the names, dates, and numbers. If you're planning to take the computer delivered test, you can highlight. And whatever you read, you summarize that information in two or three words for each paragraph. Make your notes. 
then read the questions when you read the questions understand the keywords and according to the information needed to answer that question you scan the passage and get the information but remember no question is worth a lot of your time do not take more than one minute for answering any particular question if you think you are taking more than that leave that question move on to the next one come back to it later on you need a lot of practice tests so do practice tests if you are preparing on your own analyze them understand why you are getting a particular answer wrong every time you attempt that kind of question otherwise you can always take help you can even come to you know learning for personalized live ielts classes at affordable prices you can log on to www.unolearning.com thank you for watching this video